What are your early memories of working in Japan as a young girl? Uh, the culture shock, uh, going over there, learning something new, being out of the United States for the first time, going into a restaurant, not being able to read a menu. Um, everyone else was shorter than I was. Um, but it, 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 it was it was just wonderful. It was going over there and I was doing something and living a dream that I was, uh, there were times when I was insecure about myself and where I was going to be able to fulfill the requirements that they had. I didn't know if I would be able to do that, but once I got to Japan and I got over the culture shock, and I started learning a little bit more about the Japanese people and the difference between the wrestling business in Japan or any place else in the world as opposed to the United States. It was very, very different. So after I got over the initial shock there and I settled down, of course, I had Judy Martin. She was there as a coach for right. me. Judy told me one time, she said, Sherry, you'll never last in the wrestling business. She was laying on that little bitty bed at the top of that 25-story hotel in Japan. And I was looking at her and, you know, she kind of insulted me a little bit. And I looked at her and I said, Judy, why? Why do you think that? She said, Sherry, because you're not the type of person that likes to give your hard-earned money to someone else for booking you. I think sooner or later, if you last, you'll get to a point to where you book yourself. That way you, you just don't like giving up money to people. And that's fact. I don't. Right. Regardless of it, if they train me or whatever, there comes a time, you know, and I just don't think that they get any more. What was the differences as far as working over uh, in Japan, as far as working in America? Pace. Right. Uh, there's no psych. There, I, I suppose. I suppose there's Japanese psychology to their matches. They get into a lot of high spots, a lot of high flying, and uh, at this point in time, they're getting into a lot of you know death massive death matches, putting barbed wire around the rings. Uh, pyro around the rings, lighting the rings on fire. Right. I mean, they are really, really, really abusing their bodies and stuff. But that's the way that they are taught over there. And I think I tend to think they're a bit more extreme. But that's because they can go that extreme. On the other hand, when you come back to the states, everything's pretty much well psychology. However, the hardcore type style of wrestling is coming into play. I don't particularly care for that because uh, as I've gotten older, I feel that a person should look if they're having a career, they need to think longevity and they need to take care of themselves. But as everybody knows, when you're 20, in your 20s, in early 20s, 30s, you really think you're invincible, but you're really not. It all catches up. Huh. It all does. Now, early on in your career, you were actually managed by Jim Cornette down in Memphis. Yes, I was. What are your memories of that? I, I was his first. The uh, we did when we did the convention in Charlotte uh, in January. Uh, Cornette did a, a Q and A, and he announced to the whole room that I was his first. Huh. Everybody got really, really quiet. I mean, because I can imagine what was going through all their lives, and it was right. just crazy. But yeah, he did manage me there. He told me that uh, he said, Sherry, maybe your career would have got gotten started a lot quicker if I wouldn't have been your manager. But I tell you what, if I think everything happens for a reason and time after time and time again, Jim Cornette has always come back into my life and I am proud to say he's never been nothing more than a positive role model for me. And he's a good man on top of it. A little kinky, but huh. he's a good man. Now, uh, you worked down in Mid-South with the Jarrett's. What was that territory like when you were there? Um, I had the first uh, Jim Cornette, or ben, no, Cornette. He likes to think that he had the first original Heavenly Bodies, but he didn't. I did. It was Pat Rose and Tom Pritchard, who, is, who works for uh, Vince at this point in time. Um, those, those guys were good. Uh, they used to like to tease me a little bit. No sexual harassment. But they did like to tease every once in a while. You know, they didn't go overboard with any kind of jokes or anything like that. Uh, they wouldn't, oh, they did, they, they wouldn't stop. And, uh, if you consider not letting you stop and go to the bathroom on a four or five hour trip, harassment. Huh. <laughs> I guess that would probably be about it. They would play those types of little jokes and stuff. But uh, Pat, Pat and Tom were, were wonderful. We used to always laugh at Pat Rose because he'd get on the phone to his wife. He'd have a two hour conversation by the time we, by the time he got off the phone with his wife, we could have been back in Nashville already. <laughs> we were still outside of Louisville. Yeah, there's no cell like phones that. back then, so. No, <laughs> nothing like that. But it, it was, it was wonderful. That was my experience with uh, Tom Pritchard. 
uh, at that point in time. Memphis was, was just a really, really great time in my life because I, I started forming the relationships that would, a little bit I know, would last a lifetime. Now, was that your first rural territory that you started working for? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, it was. I had uh, moved. I had, uh, after I came back from Japan the first time, went to Memphis and worked, uh, who was I working with? Uh, got Leilani Kai and, I, and, uh, two, and Big Suzanne and Penny Mitchell. We had all came in to work uh, for, in the Jarrett territory after I got back from Japan the first time. And uh, we were in a mixed men and women's battle royal in Jackson, Tennessee. Now, being the young green thing that I was, I didn't know that you weren't supposed to take bumps in the middle of the ring when there's 30 other people in there. And one of them being Cal Pal Plowboy Frazier. Remember him? Yeah, big man. Uh, big, big man. Well, I, somebody hit me and I took a bump down in the ring. He proceeded to fall on my leg, which put me out for a while. And then uh, at that point, I moved to Rochester, New York. And uh, I was out of the business for a couple years. I'd let my leg heal. I wore a brace on my left leg from all the way up to my hip for a long, long time, at least a year. Wow. And then I started uh, getting back, you know, in physical training again. And then I got it back in my head. I started, I picked up a magazine one day and, and that itch, that itch just came back and I started wrestling again. I started out with uh, AWA. Vern. Uh, with Vern uh, at that point and, um, and they dropped the uh, AWA title on me uh, a couple of years after that.